Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Paranormal Paradigm podcast. And today we've got a very special guest and it's Steve Burgess. Now Steve is a hypnotherapist and he's coming on the show to talk about, um, obviously, hypnotherapy, but the regressive side of it and talking to um, some of his clients who have come to seek past life information. And Steve is a big believer that certain issues that we may suffer with in our current life, that might be depression or anxiety or even illnesses, can be linked to past lives and can be helped eased in the current life by addressing the issues of the past life. So it's a very interesting interview we've got coming up today. Um, But before that, um, I had a rather large um, post put onto the Paranoia uh, Facebook page. Now, if you don't know what that is, it is a new joint venture that myself and James Brody, who you might remember from a couple of episodes ago, we're starting a new venture. So it's going to be uh, an investigative team and also a point of contact for anybody should they wish to contact us about experiences they've had regarding the paranormal. Now, that doesn't have to be just ghosts, as always. Uh, We have a special form that can be filled out for people who have had contact with UFOs, for example, or even cryptids or anything like that. Um, It's just a point of contact where you can come to us, explain your experiences, talk to us about it. Uh, Obviously, if you're in the same country as us currently, we will come and investigate, see if we can get to the bottom of it, take some information, build a case study, and hopefully help you understand what it is you saw and what it is that you experienced. So if there are any people out there that, you know, are currently looking for someone to come and talk to them about that, then uh, if you head over to Facebook and search for the group Paranoia, that's P-A-R-A-L-N-O-I-A, or just hit me up and I'll put the link. I'll also make sure I put the link to that to that group at the bottom of this podcast as well. Just come and join in. There's some, some nice discussions going on over there. And uh, it's just another string to to, to my bow, really, in terms of um, branching out into the paranormal world. Uh, And on that page, we had a uh, I had a post uh, given to me by Greg Stockdale, who I know is a regular listener to the show. He lives in Gower, uh, I think that's in South Wales. And uh, he 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 put uh, a lengthy post, and I told him I'd read it out on the show. So it, it is lengthy, but, you know, it, it's interesting. So if, I'm just going to read it, how he's written it. A uh, bit of background is uh, he lives in, in Gower. It is in South Wales. And he grew up a few miles away from a ruined Norman castle. And apparently that whole area is uh, steeped in folklore. And I'm, I'm sure wherever you guys are listening from, you all have that area local to you that has, you know, a lot of folklore and a lot of mystery surrounding it. For myself, we have Canic Chase, and Canic Chase has uh, black-eyed children. It has UFOs. It has, <laughs> it even has its own Bigfoot in the in the heart of England. Apparently, um, uh, obviously, it has spirits as well. So it's it's a common place there that the paranormal people go to try and investigate all all walks of the paranormal. Uh, so every area has it, and it seems that um, where Greg lives is is no exception. So. Um, some of the, the, I guess, some of the mysteries they have around there, the folklore, they include fairies and a banshee. Now, I'm not going to try and pronounce how the banshee is known. It is Welsh, and I am no good at pronouncing Welsh, so I'm not even going to try and embarrass myself there. Um, when he was in primary school, he learned the legend of how the castle was ruined by the fairies, and years later, an old story of the banshee attacking people would often keep him awake at night. So I'm just going to uh, shift into into Steve's writing now and, and read it how, how, how he's written it. So I uh, hope you enjoy this, just a little excerpt. So fast forward to about 1998 and a group of us got together and went on a Halloween walk around the area, aiming to get to the castle around midnight. We visited a few places first, a burial chamber known locally as Giant's Cat Grave and a cave called Cat Hole, which was very spooky. One of the group would tell stories about wherever we were, although they were the only times I've ever heard these stories, so I suspect he made them up just to add the atmosphere. We did get to the castle for midnight, and in true cliché fashion, a thick fog rolled in from the sea as we sat within the castle grounds and the castle behind us. The storyteller of the group tapped me on the shoulder and whispered, something is playing games with us, and nodded in the direction of a section of ruined wall. 
Out of the corner of my eye, I could see a shadowy form peeking at us, but as I turned my head to look, it seemed to duck out of sight, only to reappear when I looked away. And that's a common, uh, just breaking out of the story here, that's a common occurrence and a common sighting, really. You know, you, you always capture something out of the corner of your eye and it always seems to disappear when you look directly at it or when you're focusing attention on it. Uh, quite often I say, if you're really looking for something on an investigation, uh, it, it won't happen until you're least suspecting it, really. So back to the story. I also saw a figure of a woman in big skirts seemingly bending down and picking stuff up off the floor. This was a weird thing, really, because it was just a very eroded shadow in the fog, but I got the clearest impression that that's what it was. It only lasted a few seconds before swirling away in the breeze. The gatehouse of the castle was directly behind us, and I saw a figure, again, very eroded, walking in the archway. Originally, I figured it was a gap in the fog, because it moved in the direction of the wind, but then it moved the other way. It did this a few times, giving the impression of a guard patrolling the gate. The fog got thicker and we decided to call it a night. I was reluctant to walk through the gate after seeing all of this, but everyone else did and I didn't fancy walking all the way around on my own, and this is the only time I can say I felt a cold spot. It was so strange. It was a cold that seemed to go right through to your bones. I mean, it was a foggy October night, so it was cold anyway, but this was different. On the way back, the fog got so thick that we got lost, something that has happened on more than one occasion there since. I've spent an awful lot of time over the castle since, but I've never seen that woman or the guard there again. I have, however, seen the shadowy figure that likes to peek at you on more than one occasion, usually late afternoon or at sunset. A few years ago, there was a discussion on a local page about the castle and the banshee, and someone commented that they had seen her dancing on the walls at sunset so I guess that it might have been her that I've seen. Thankfully, she hasn't seen fit to harass me in the manner of one of the stories about her. He didn't tell that story, but I'd be interested to hear what the, the harassing story is. I should also add that at no point was this a scary experience. Seeing these things was on a par to seeing some exotic animal in real life. I think a feeling of privilege is probably the wrong phrase, but it was really a, wow, not many people I know have seen an actual ghost. I've been into the paranormal since I was very young, so it was a bit of a bucket list moment. So there you go. Um, very interesting, and I've spoken to Greg at some length about this, and we're in the early stages of arranging me and James to go down there and investigate the area, because it sounds like there's quite a lot of uh, nice little little areas we could go and investigate down there, particularly uh, Cat Hole Cave and... Um, uh, the the castle itself should be really good. Um, so there you go, Greg. I told you I'd read that out. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope the uh, the listeners also enjoyed listening to that. And if you head over to the Paranoia page, you, you should be getting more of these as more people uh, join into the group and start putting their experiences up as well. And if you do have any experiences you'd like to come directly to me about, please do. Please feel free. You can email me at paranormalparadigmpodcast at gmail.com or my own personal email address, which is kieran.woodhouse at gmail.com. So there you go. A little bit there about our new venture, my new venture with James and Greg's story. So now on to the, in, the uh, interview with Steve, Steve Burgess. As I say, uh, he's coming on to discuss um, hypnotherapy. And uh, an absolute uh, huge interest of mine is this kind of uh, reincarnation, the fact that we've all had a past life, numerous past lives, um, most people uh, I speak to that are into the paranormal also have that same belief. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this interview. So uh, without further ado, let's crack on. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And here I am now with Steve. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Hi, Kieran. Doing very well, thank you. Yes. That's good to you. hear. Um, well, thank you for joining me. It was, it was quite uh, quite short notice, really, to get you on the show. Um, but I'm, I'm glad you've come on. Now, Past life regression, reincarnation, I guess it, it falls under the same umbrella. It's always been a passion of mine. It, like I've always had a feeling that I have lived past lives. Mm -hmm. um, and and I guess I've always wanted to be regressed. It's just something I've never got around to doing. Okay. Uh, what What is it for you that, that, that drew you to that? You know, so look, could you give us a brief overview of what regression is for those that don't understand and how you got involved with the field? Yes, of course. 
Um, regression basically means just to go back into the past in some way. In hypnotherapy terms, in therapy terms, it means going back in trance to something that's happened in the past and reliving it. So that all sounds quite dramatic. It's actually quite a natural thing we do because whenever we, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, remember something that happened in the past, we have just simply regressed. If I say to you, Kieran, what did you have for dinner last night? And you spend a few seconds rooting around for those <laughs> memories. Um, and then you say, I had whatever, you know, bacon and egg or chips or Chinese or whatever. Um, you've just regressed. So regression means just basically going back in your thoughts, in your mind to remember something. In therapy terms, what regression means is to go back into something in the past that has caused a problem in our lives that is uh, causing a problem now and to relive the cause of the problem. So the regression model is that all issues that we have in our lives come from locked in feelings and emotions from past traumas. And those traumas take place in this lifetime. Of course, most of us have got emotional baggage from this time, this life, especially childhood, from previous lives and also from our ancestors' lives. Uh, but it's the past life which I think is the most fascinating. So mm -hmm. that's the concept of past life regression. And in hypnotherapy terms, what we do is we take our clients into trance, into a state of focused inner awareness, a little bit like meditation or perhaps quite a relaxation process. And then we ask our client's subconscious to go back into the past to relive whatever they need to relive to release the emotion that is causing the problem in the present. So, and I'll give you an example in a moment, if I may, of how, you, how I got into this. Yeah, but sure. Basically, virtually any problem that we have can come from previous life traumas. So the, that can be depression, it can be anxiety, it can be a lack of confidence, it can be phobias, it can be anxiety states, it can be physical illness, it can be cancer, it can be whatever, whatever, whatever. And basically any issue that any of us have comes from locked in feelings and emotions from the past. Now in past life terms, now I basically I'd been a, I've been doing this job for 28 years now, and um, over the years, I, initially, I was just a normal hypnotherapist, just doing normal hypnotherapy. And after about six months as in private practice, after I uh, got trained and got started, um, a young man came to me who was in his early 20s who had a massive anxiety state inside him. And he sat in front of me in the chair here, and, and he was a complete bag of nerves. That's our English phrase, a bag of nerves. <laughs> uh, he was shaking. He was hyperventilating. As he was talking to me, he was sort of stuttering and stammering his words out. And so I said, so tell me about the anxiety. And he said, I just can't get rid of it. He said, I'm just 24 hours a day anxious. Um, I now cannot work. I'm sitting at home all day long, shaking. I have no life. Um, my wife said she's going to divorce me if, if it doesn't get any better. Uh, she's just sick and tired of it. So I said, so how long have you had this for? And he said, well, I've always been a worrier. Even as a child, I was a worrier, an anxious child. But since the children came along, then it got a lot worse. And over the last year or two, it's got to this stage where I just cannot live my life. I just sit at home shaking all day long. So this is a serious anxiety state, Kieran. This is not somebody who feels a bit uptight about something. This is somebody whose life was completely closed in because of the anxiety. Yeah. So I took him into trance. I guided him into hypnosis. And as he went into hypnosis, he started to relax very nicely. And in fact, he relaxed so nicely that within about five to ten minutes, he was just laid in my relaxing chair, completely calm. His breathing was slow and deep, and uh, his whole body had softened. And I thought, okay, this is great. This is just another standard hypnotherapy session. And I was about to start giving him or his subconscious suggestions to start feeling better and calmer when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, his whole body to shake. He laid in the chair, and he was shaking and jerking and writhing. And his head was going from side to side, and he was his breathing was coming fast. And all of a sudden, he started. To, he was half whispering and half shouting, and he started to say, "They're coming! They're coming! No, hide, 
hide in here, hide. They're coming, no, no, hide, hide in here, the children, hide the children. No, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. No, 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 quiet. And then he was quiet for about 10 seconds. And then all of a sudden he started to scream and writhe and shake. No, 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 not the children. No, no, no. Ah! And he just laid in the chair completely flat and calm. <laughs> and I thought, oh, right. It was quite a shock for me. And the way I've explained it there was a hundred times less than it, than it actually happened. Yeah, I imagine, yeah. So I said, how are you? And he said, oh, I feel wonderful. I feel completely calm. I feel calm. Oh, I've never felt this calm in my life before. I feel absolutely relaxed. I thought, well, I don't. My heart was beating away because I hadn't <laughs> expected it. So I said, what was happening? He said, it was weird. It was like I was in another body in another time. I, I was a man and, and I had a wife and children and soldiers were looking for us and we tried to hide from them. And then they found us and they came in and they shot us. What was that? He said, what was that? So I said, okay, well, it's, it's a past life. You've had a past life experience. Um, and are you okay? He said, I'm fantastic. I feel completely calm. And without a word of a like here, and his anxiety state was completely cured in those 10 minutes. Wow. So when he came out of translator, he was completely healed. He was calm. He's got his life back. And I sat and thought, this is significant. Why don't I know about this? Because I'd not been trained in regression or past life regression. Because in those days, in the early 90s, not many people in the UK were doing this. No, no. So I did some research, got some information from an American past life association, started to work with it more frequently, and developed a system of regression, which I now uh, work with, or with my clients, uh, which is so powerful and so effective that so many clients come to me with with problems that they've had since forever and as a result of regression sessions we got them completely cleared so it, it's almost like when he, he it cleared him and he, he you know he, his life went back to normal mm -hmm. it's like he just needed to get that off his chest yeah that, that's what it seems like to me like it was just bursting to come out it, it was it was what we call a spontaneous regression and right. his, sub his subconscious was desperate to get there it was almost fast we can get rid of this and just by going into trance, it's much easier to go back into emotional causes than it is when we're sort of wide awake and talking normally. Uh, so the trance process allows the subconscious mind, the deeper mind, to come through. And it allows the work to get done because the subconscious knows how to heal the client best. And, and just kind of just to round that story off, did, did you ever find out who, what, what the situation was? Uh, no, I think it was the Second World War. I think it was the Nazis. Okay. Right. Um, but um, we, we didn't get too many clear, because when somebody's in it like that, to be honest, they don't get the pictures very clearly because they're so in the emotions and so in the experience. Yeah. Uh, they don't always see it very clearly. And for me as the therapist, I'm not interested very really in the pictures. I'm interested in releasing the trauma, the emotional stuff, so the, so the client gets better. Okay, so that so that there that that's a, a positive. Uh, although it was negative to start with, it, it turned out to be be positive. Yeah. Do you ever have um, like you know someone that they, they don't come to you because they're suffering with anxiety? Do you get people that come just because they're genuinely interested about finding out about past life, mm -hmm. and it's more of a, an all round positive experience? Yes, very much so. I mean, I talk a lot about the dramatic experiences because. Um, it, it surprises people just how powerful this stuff yeah. is. But many people come to me who say, I just want to see who I was in a previous life. Or they'll say, you know, I've always had this strong sense of um, living in Africa, or I've always had this strong sense about the Roman times. Um, and so we often find them when, we, when they go into trance that the subconscious takes them back into a past life in those times. And, uh, and they can get a strong sense of it. And it makes sometimes it makes sense of the life now. So that's a positive thing. Or the other thing is sometimes people say, uh, I want to know if my sister or my partner or my husband or wife was around me in past lives. And so then we can explore that. And we'll often find, especially 
you know, we, we've lived many, many lifetimes and we've been around people for so many times. So if we've been, if we're married to somebody or if we're, we're in love or close to somebody, the chances are we've been around them many times in previous lives in different ways. Okay. You kind of brought one of my, one of my later questions forward there. Um, I, it, it was really that, you know, cause I remember there was a film called, uh, Cloud Atlas. It had Tom Hanks in and some other people. And it was, it, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it, it was no. kind of set in different periods throughout history. And it also went into the future as oh, well. Oh yes. I never saw it. I knew of it, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and and yes. It, it was a really interesting film because they were all played by the same. Mm. So the characters were played by the same actors in the different periods and they were always drawn to the same people. Yes. So they were always they would always fall in love with the same person just in yes. a different period of time. That's so it. I was I did wonder if that was the case. Did you often find that husband and wife now were husband and wife before? Maybe they were uh, father and daughter, or, or, or are they always connected? They're always connected, and um, it may be in different ways, as you say, father daughter, mother son, brother brother, brother sister, whatever. Because we obviously we change life from uh, change sex from life to yeah. life. Yeah. Um, but yes, if you're close to somebody, then you have been around the, that person or those people many times in previous lifetimes. And um, sometimes even if you're not close to somebody, even if you are, let's say you have a parent who you don't get on with, or you've always had real problems with your brother or your sister uh, in this life, then that often comes from past lifetimes. So, you know, mm-hmm. it may be that... Um, you you have a sister in this life and you've always argued, you've always hated each other, you've always fought, she's horrible to you, she's always bullied you. But when we open that up in past life therapy terms, it may be that you've killed her in a previous life. In oh, which right. case, no, no wonder she doesn't like yeah, you yeah. in this one. Um, wow. So, yeah. So those, and, and what happens is when we explore that, it softens those critical energies between people. So when when you you talk about you know we've lived many past lives my own personal belief or my own theories are that we are all one consciousness Mm -hmm. and we're consciousness that is trapped within a biological vessel that um kind of traps us within this five sense reality Mm -hmm. and once the vessel uh expires and our consciousness leaves we can then um vibrate on alternate frequencies that we can't currently uh-huh. Um, how, how would how would that tie in? I'm not I'm not trying to make it tie in. I'm mm-hmm. just trying to get around how how do we move from one body to the next? And is it a um, is it a choice? Because I often think, why would somebody choose to be a starving African child? Or yes. you know, why wouldn't we all be living rich millionaires or something? So yeah. how how does that process happen? How do you go from body to body? Okay, I mean, I, I'm not totally sure, and nobody's totally sure. My, my reading of it is that when we die, obviously the physical body dies, and our, our astral body, our soul leaves the body and is able then to move on um, and then comes back to get reborn. But it's just like an essence of us is reborn. Not everything about us is reborn time after time. Uh, but more than that, um, how can I put this? The, oh gosh, the the traditional concept of reincarnation is that when we die, our soul goes up to a place of learning, uh, often a place of healing as well, if we've had a really tough life. And we look at the life that we've just lived and find out really where we went wrong. And we see that life through higher eyes, you could say. Uh, through because we're not trapped in the earthly body we have a much higher awareness then we really that's our higher self coming through i think yeah yeah and then it says we then look at coming back in order to be to, to gain more knowledge and the traditional concept of reincarnation is that we live many lifetimes in order to live in so many different ways in order to grow as a soul until ultimately we don't have to get reborn and we can sort of step off the cycle of death and rebirth and move up to higher planes of existence. Uh, and I'm not sure if that exactly, I know that doesn't exactly answer your question. No, 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 it, I, it makes sense. I don't know the, an, well, I don't know the answer, so I've sidestepped your question. Really. <laughs> <laughs> A very politician way of doing it. <laughs> yeah, um, yes. I, I but what I would say, can I just, I just go yeah, on sure, something? Sure. Because, do you know, there's something that, 
I've been looking at for the past couple of years and trying to get more information on. And this is the possibility that we don't have to get reborn at all, that reincarnation is forced upon us. Now, I'm not saying that this is the case, because I'm now just starting to look at this and looking for information that can verify this or can at least get it, move me further on with my understanding. There are some people who say that when we die, our soul leaves the body, and then there are aliens who are actually ruling the earth uh, with the ruling elite. And what they do, they come to us when we're dead in, in a sort of a spirit form, pretending to be angels or pretending to be nice beings. And then they take us and move us to some place and make us think that we have to get reborn because they live on our negative energies. So when we get reborn onto earth into all of the suffering and all the horrors, then they feed on that energy. So they obviously want us to keep being reborn. And some people would say, look, we are perfect entities as we are. We are perfect sovereign, be sovereign beings as we are. So why do we need to learn anything when we know everything anyway? So that's quite a shocking sort of thought, especially to those people who have been schooled, as I was many years ago, in the traditional concept of reincarnation. So now I'm sort of questioning it. I'm really not sure. So what, what you're doing there is you're going down the path of David Icke and Very you're talking about the, the archons yes. and the reptilian entities that control us from these outside frequencies. Yes. And I'm very, very well versed in uh, in that. So what you've just said makes absolutely perfect sense to me. Mm. Um, and and it kind of, that is what fueled my own investigations and my own research. Um, not to take the spotlight off you at the moment, but no, I mean, really, it was for me, it was learning about the nature of reality and living in inside a holographic universe. Mm -hmm. and why we are made to perceive the world how we perceive it. And so when I mentioned earlier very briefly about being trapped within this five-sense reality, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't really realise that you were going to come at it from this angle, but what I essentially was saying, that there are um, possibly outside entities that are trapping us in mm -hmm. this reality. Yeah. Um, and they feed, and you're right, they feed off the lower vibrational energy, which is controlled and created by fear, hence the constant fear-mongering from the media and that you know the, the keeping us in this state of fear uh, all the time so um yeah that's that's an act. i never knew that that kind of theory could be applied to past life regression mm. and to reincarnation mm. and you've just blown my mind <laughs> a little bit um trying to you know put in that in in that perspective is uh yes. is absolutely wow um okay so do, do you mean, ever have Go on, carry on. I was going to say it doesn't negate the the past life regression work because we've all that we you know we've lived many many lifetimes and we've all got emotional baggage from the past. So it doesn't negate that. It just means that I think there's a different perspective that needs to be looked at and maybe needs to be brought out. But I'll be honest, I'm struggling to find good information on it. Well, I was, I was that kind of led me to another question though, which was, are you that kind of thought process? So where I come from that angle in the paranormal field. Mm. It's not that widely accepted. Everybody just thinks that that ghosts are just dead people, basically. Mm -hmm. um, is is your thought process there? Is that a popular opinion? Is it is it spoken of a lot, or do you find that you're not shunned but kind of ignored? Uh, in terms of you mean the the um, not having to be reborn? That yeah. That, so that whole theory you just described is it yeah. difficult to put that across to your what? to your fellow peers? I don't, I don't talk about it very much, to be honest. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy talking about it with people like yourself who understand these things, that there's a much bigger picture. Um, but I just keep very quiet about it because I'm a, I'm a jobbing therapist. You know, clients come to me, well, most of my work nowadays is online, so I have clients all around the world nowadays. And they, they come to me with an issue, and I want to help them to get better. And that's what the process is about. So my beliefs and my uh, knowledge about things doesn't come into it. Um, it is about getting them better. Let's get into past life regression. Let's release the trauma. Let's get you better from your problem. And uh, so I don't really talk about the, the the other stuff very much. Okay, I, was, I just thought I would have it would have been interesting um, to see if if it was shunned because when you say you find it difficult to find more information out there, um, in my opinion, there's a reason for that. You know, because if if if, if you are kind of getting too close to the truth. 
then you find mm. that the information gets harder and harder to find because it's, I think it's, very, it's very well guarded. I think as well as that, and that's, a, well, that's one reason, I would say another reason, though, is that the concept of reincarnation is so heavily ingrained into certainly Eastern consciousness and uh, and many people in the West nowadays. So the traditional concept is sort of so heavily taught that I don't think people th- think around it very much. They accept that, that that's the concept and that that's what happens. Um, so there's not many people looking at this at all, as far as I know. No, I mean, I was... So do you, do you find that, that, that a belief in reincarnation and people that follow um, that that kind of, I guess, uh, theory, has that risen in popularity? Uh, I mean, because I remember when I was younger being fascinated with this. I, I used to watch, there was a program called Strange But True. I don't know if you remember that. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, it was Michael Parkinson. And that, that used to have regular reincarnation stories on that always blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and but I, I remember talking to my mom and dad about it. And then kind of being, oh no, it's a load of rubbish. And uh, has it got popular now? Is, do you find that more people yes, it accept it? Very much so. Very, very much so. As I said, I've been doing it 28 years. 28 years ago, it was a cookie thing. It was a bit weird. It was off centre. Uh, and it still is for many people, of course. But more often than not, more people know about the concept of reincarnation and believe in it than don't nowadays. So it is, it's been a massive explosion in the last quarter of a century in the UK, certainly. What would you put that down to? What, what, why would you say that that's happened? Uh, I think, on the one hand, the great growth of New Age um, yeah. spirituality, uh, because a lot of New Age spirituality does have connections back into, uh, into reincarnation. Uh, and I think that's probably the main reason, whether we like New Age stuff or not, um, I think that is the, probably almost certainly the main reason. And also, of course, the, the uh, adaptation of Buddhism into the West as well. Yeah. Uh, and that has certainly made a big difference. Okay. So do you, do you ever come across a case where that guy you mentioned where he was, he was possibly in World War II mm-hmm. um, and it cleared his anxiety? Have you ever come across a case where it's made it worse or they're now reliving that constantly? You know, no. so it... Even, that's never happened. No, it, it can happen if, it, if the job's not done properly. It's a good question. So, you know, when we're working in this way, we're working with the human mind and we have to make sure the client is safe. So as long as it is done properly, then the client will get better. Unfortunately, as with any job, <laughs> you've got good therapists, average therapists and crap therapists. Same with, <laughs> same with doctors, same with bus drivers, same with plumbers. Um, and so, unfortunately, there are some therapists who play with past life regression. And for me, it is a very serious psychotherapeutic discipline. So, for example, my past life regression training course that I run is four days long. Now, there are a lot of people running a past life training course on one for one day. Um, that's it. Or they'll do it online. Well, you can't learn this online, not to be safe. So, to me, it's a very serious discipline. And... Um, you know, as long as it's done properly, then it is safe for the client. But if you go to somebody who's a bit half baked and they're not properly trained, it could make you worse for a while. You know, it's not going to last forever. Yeah, you know, you're not going to be if you go into a past life and uh, something horrible happens in the Second World War. You're not going to start thinking that you're a, a Russian soldier or something. You know, <laughs> forever. Uh, but you you can feel crap for a while afterwards if if it's not done right. Okay. One of my biggest fears, because like I say, it's something I've always wanted wanted done, but the one thing that's held me back is being worried that I wouldn't be able to be put under. I'd oh. hate nothing more than to kind of, you know, spend the money or to go there, take this yeah. person's time up, yeah. sit there, and the stubborn guy I am okay. just refused to, to, to go under. Does that happen? I mean, would you be able to put me under? Okay, well, let, let, can I just, that's like a red rag to a bull using the word under to a hypnotherapist, okay? So, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sitting here with that bite in my nails right now, um, <laughs> bringing my hands. You don't go under. This is the word that um, people use. You don't go under hypnosis. Uh, be, that, that implies you're going to be under the control of the therapist yeah. or under anything like that, which is nothing like that. A trance a hypnotic state, we all go into trance at least 24 times a day. So it's completely natural. For example, when we daydream, that's trance. When we go on automatic pilot in the car and we suddenly don't realize we've been driving for a while, that's a trance. 
when we get wrapped up in a TV program and we don't notice what's going on around us or when we focus on something, that's trance. So trance is, hypnosis is a completely natural process, which we go into. Okay, so we don't go under hypnosis, we go into it. Um, there'll be all hypnotherapists listening to me all over the place now applauding. <laughs> 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 well done, Burgess. You, um, so everybody can, go, can be hypnotized unless they are mentally subnormal or stoned. Um, so uh, provided, and I don't think you're either of those two, Kieran. So the chances are <laughs> you, you can be hypnotized, but it depends on, a, on a, a variety of things as to how deeply you go into trance on the day. You may be a bit resistant, a bit apprehensive. It depends on the skills of the therapist. So everybody can go into trance. Not everybody can regress though. And so it can be a bit frustrating at times where some people want to regress, but we, they just can't seem to get there. Um, and then, of course, people experience regression in different ways. So some people, for example, in a past life are seeing it very clearly in the mind's eye. And they're, re they're just narrating the story to me. You know, I'm, I'm walking down a cobble street. There's people with horses and carts going past and uh, uh, there's men on horseback, etc., etc. But some people don't actually see the past life. They just feel it. And they have what we call a kinesthetic experience. Um, in that case, we don't see a lot of what's happening, but I actually use a technique where the subconscious can tell us what's happening. So we do get some information. So, uh, but going back to your question, everybody can be hypnotized. And as long as you're sort of open to it and you allow yourself to go in a little bit and to relax a little bit, there's a good chance that you can, that you can be hypnotized and get something in regression. What I will say, if I may, is that I do have a free YouTube channel which has got free hypnotherapy recordings on it. And uh, if you or the listeners are interested, it's called Hypno For All. That's on YouTube. It's H-Y-P-N-O for as in the number for A-L-L, -L, Hypno For All. And that is a way to practice. If you're not sure, can I be hypnotized? Well, listen to one of the recordings and see whether you can relax to them or not. And if you can relax fairly well, then yes, you can be hypnotized. Okay, I'll be sure to put that um, that along with your other links Thank you. uh, beneath beneath the video uh, when it's uploaded. So when you're um, when you're beginning your sessions, mm. do, do you find that the same technique works for everyone, or do you have to alter your you know the, the way you do it? For I alter people? it. Yeah, d different people. Yes, very much so. And uh, because each client is unique, the experience trans in their own unique way. I have to be aware of that and alert to that and uh, and take them in in the right way. Yes. So it's not just a question of just reading a piece of paper and it works every single time. Right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so when when I, people often think about being uh, being regressed, people will often fantasize or think about the fact that they were, I don't know, someone really famous like Julius Caesar or mm. something like that in a past life. Did, have you ever come across that, or do you find that they were all just bog-standard, normal people? Yeah. Do you know, for, for 10 years of my career, Kieran, whenever I read of anybody saying that they were famous in a past life, for example, Shirley MacLaine, the actress, saying that she was uh, Emperor Charlemagne, the great uh, concubine, I used to just think, you egotist, because yeah. I'd done thousands of regression sessions, and everybody was a normal person in those regression sessions. They were humble people who were uh, soldiers and farmers and peasants and business people, whatever. And then one day that <laughs> my attitude was shattered because a, <laughs> a, a lady called me and uh, she said, can you help me? She said, something very strange has happened. I work in an office and last week, one of the men in the office, I got on very well with him. We're just very good friends. He passed me a file, and as he did that, he touched my hand. Immediately, I got this image in my mind's eye of a lady in a long, fantastically expensive dress with long, sort of reddish-coloured hair in an old oak-panelled room. And I got this really strong sense of frustration. And she said, since that, I cannot get that image and that feeling of frustration out of my mind and my body. She said, what is it? So I said, well, you've probably been drinking too much vodka, haven't you? <laughs> but she didn't take that. So I said, it could be past life. Come and see me. She came for a session. I took her into trance. 
I asked her subconscious to take her back to that image. She then began to relive a past life as a lady waiting in this old oak panel room, waiting for her lover to come, desperate for him. Eventually, he comes in the door wearing all these old-fashioned, very old-fashioned clothes and a long hat and long hair, etc. And they fall into, into each other's arms, and it was kissy-kissy, huggy-huggy. Now, I'm thinking at this stage, okay, this is just a normal past life regression. So I asked her to go to another scene in that past life. And bear in mind, she's laying there in the chair in trance with her eyes closed. She's just talking to me as we're talking now. And she then saw herself in a very big room with hundreds of people looking at her as she sat up above them on a sort of a throne. And then a man came over and bowed to her and said, Your Majesty. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, okay. What have we got here? It appears she was Queen Elizabeth I, our virgin queen in the UK, in, in the UK, in England. Now, she came out of trance and was pretty damn shocked, as I was. And I'm very sceptical. My dad's a scientist, so I, I don't do belief very easily. But I said, let's do a few more sessions and see if we can find out, is this real? So she started to come for sessions, and she started to relive this amazing, passionate love affair that Queen Elizabeth had with Robert Dudley, uh, the Earl of Leicester. That was the man she was waiting for. And in our sessions, she put flesh on the bones. People always know that she had a sort of a, a love affair with Dudley, but nobody knew how far it went. In fact, they always pretended that she was the virgin queen. Well, she wasn't. Because <laughs> in, in, one, in one of our sessions, she actually had sex with Dudley. She, in, in the chair, she re, in front of me in trance, she re-experienced wow. having sex with him, and she had a 400-year-old orgasm in the chair. <laughs> It was amazing. It was amazing. So wow. she came out of trance and I said, how was it for you as we lit a cigarette up? And, uh, <laughs> but it was incredible. So she put flesh on the bones and she actually came up with some historical information that she could not have known. Um, and so that changed my attitude. But what happened then? And can I tell you a bit more about this? Is it okay? to? No, uh, please. It's, it's fascinating, yeah. What happened then is that a few months later, another lady came to me for therapy and she went back into a past life in which she was a teenager looking after the young Queen Elizabeth when Queen Elizabeth was a princess aged about three or four or five. And she felt great love for, for Princess Elizabeth. And we finished the session. She said, I think I was Elizabeth's governess. So... I said, I tell you what, you won't believe this, but I've got another client who it looks like she was Queen Elizabeth. If she's prepared to meet, would you like to meet? I said, oh, fantastic, she said. So I contacted Elizabeth. She was happy to meet. So I have to be careful because of client confidentiality, yeah. of course. They were very happy to meet. And what happened is they met. I have a friend down in Lincoln. Uh, both of these ladies were, were housewives from the, from the Midlands, Lincolnshire area. Um, and they met in a, in a friend's office in, in Lincoln. What I expected was that they would run into each other's arms and hug each other and <laughs> sob uh, because they hadn't seen each other for 400 years. No, they both came in the room. They went towards each other as if they're going to say hello. And then there was a recoil. They backed away from each other and very frostily shook hands. And I thought, that's a bit weird. So we talked about things. Then I took them both into trance together hoping to be able to regress them both and provoke some more uh, memories uh, that might make sense of things. But actually, the energy was all wrong. They were both very tense. It really didn't happen. So we finished the session and we said goodbye. And I thought, okay, that was interesting. But the next day, the lady who thought she was the governess sent me a message saying, Steve, I've been awake all night. That regression has opened things up. I wasn't her governess. I was Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth's <laughs> elder sister, Bloody Mary, as we know her, of yeah. course. So then we started to do more sessions to investigate this. And this lady, the, in, the um, historical information that she came up with in the sessions, I had to bury a, ferret about in history books to find. 
And she was absolutely right in everything she said. And there was specific information that she would never have known in a million years because she was a, she was a housewife. She'd never read this stuff or yeah. studied it. So that was amazing. And then one after another, I started to get more people who came to me who appear to be famous. And I've written a book about this. It's called Famous Past Lives. And it contains the stories of these clients. One lady was one of Jack the Ripper's prostitute victims, for example. Um, she's a policewoman in this lifetime. Isn't that curious? <laughs> that, uh, that's interesting. Um, I had uh, Titus Oates from the Scott of the Antarctic Expedition. Um, I, the biggest name drop of all is a gentleman who, gentleman who may have been Shakespeare. I say mm. may have been Shakespeare, but we, he, he, that was quite incredible. He, he couldn't even spell Shakespeare. He was a very non-academic man, but he came through with a lot of information that made sense. Well, what's uh, interesting there, sorry, is that there are, there are rumours that Shakespeare was a non-academic man, and even Shakespeare couldn't write his own name. Uh, yeah, I mean, personally, I you know I, I've studied this stuff for a lot number of years, and uh, I don't believe Shakespeare wrote the plays personally. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at books about Sir Henry Neville at the moment, which really seem to make a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I've written a book, Famous Past Lives. That was my first book um, about this. So my attitude now is, that okay, and I, I, over the years now I've got people contacted me who appear to have been famous. In my new book, the one that's just come out, The Power of Past Life Regression, I'm writing about a gentleman who was uh, Sir George Cayley, um, and he actually was one of the first people to create uh, flights yeah. well before the Wright brothers. This was in the 1850s. Um, and this gentleman relived his life and came up with a lot of information. So um, I'm now less um, uh, rigid when somebody thinks they may have been famous. Let's put it that way. So for, for, for you, really, all you can go by is um, what they're telling you and, and fact-checking that to yes. see if, if it's right. I guess there's, there's a huge element of trust, that you know, yes. that you trust that this person isn't just leading you on. And I guess that the, the, the rarer the fact, you know, the, the deeper the fact, the more believable it is, as you say, you know, if you've got yes. to root through history books. Yeah. Um, but have you ever come across, did, have you, did you look then to see if anybody else has ever claimed to, to, to have been Queen Elizabeth mm. I? Or? Very good question. Very intelligent question, actually. And it brings into another sphere of things because um, I've certainly heard of several people who claim to have been re the reincarnations of Queen Elizabeth. Uh, around the world and it may be that several people have been the reincarnation of Queen Elizabeth so you think how the heck does that work if I can explain this I, I had a gentleman years ago came for a past life for a session and he was a, an, uh, an air force pilot in the first world war first world war 1914 1918 so that's pretty standard but a few weeks later in another regression session he relived the life as a woman alive in the time of the First World War. So that's two lives you at know, the same two, time. Two, at the same time. Well, so I'm immediately thinking, I'm very, then at this stage, I'm skeptical. I'm thinking, oh, he's making this up. He's making this up. But I did a bit of reading, and there's a book called uh, Journey of Souls, which um, after my two books is the third best book on past life regression. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, oh dear. Um, so, uh, written by uh, Michael Newton and he explains this that our soul is so big it can split and be reborn into more than one person on earth at any one time so I mean you might be Matt Hancock at the moment um, but anyway <laughs> political free <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. so um, and, and so it appears that our soul can be so big it can split off and be reborn in more than one person at any one time. And my belief is that the biggest historical characters, I think their soul is probably bigger in some way than a normal soul. And so therefore it can be split off into more than two people, into several people when that person is on, uh, when that person goes back up and then that, those, that soul gets reborn in different people. Wow. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I've, I I had a different theory when I asked the question. Okay. Uh, and, and my theory would be that if time isn't linear, which I believe it to not be, and there are, if you look into the string theory and how we're, you know, so what happened yesterday 
it's happening again today and it's happening again tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. Is it possible, though, that that that, that could be the case? So there are infinity Queen Elizabeths out yes. there. Could Therefore, be. it's possible that infinity people have been Queen Elizabeth. Yes, uh, very much the case. Uh, you know, it's this whole concept of parallel worlds, parallel universes. Time is happening all the time at the same time, um, which is totally mind blowing. So yes, that could be another another answer to it. It really could, Kieran. I don't think we can ever really say for definite what it is, um, but all I know is that it is possible for more than one person to claim to have been a famous person. Yeah, because I, I find that interesting. It, and obviously, it's it's easier to know if 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 more than one person has claimed to be Queen Elizabeth I or Shakespeare. Mm. It's not so easy to find out if more than one person has claimed to be uh, John Smith, who worked down the mines in Dudley, yeah. um, and you know died at the age of twenty five, mm. being crushed by coal. Yes. Because who would want to claim to be that person? Good point. Um, so. It, if if you if there was a way of comparing that that and finding that there were multiple people who had been John Smith from Dudley, mm. um, then I, I think we could we could follow that theory through a little bit more. Good it's point. just everybody wants to be Shakespeare, or everybody wants to you know. So it, it yeah. does have that element of mm, you just can never be too sure. Yeah, good point. Good point. Okay, okay. So you know when 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 you you kind of take these people and you you put them into trance. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do you find that that it, it it's always historical? And, and what I mean by that is, this is a question that's, that's only just come to me. Mm-hmm. If 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 do you ever have anyone that claims to have been from the future? Have you ever had that? No, I, I've taken people into the future. We've done I've done future life progression, um, okay, progression. but I haven't to the to. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I've done 15,000 sessions, so I can't remember everything, but I'm pretty sure I haven't had anybody who has come back from the future. Uh, no, I, I can't say that. So how, how does the pro- progression work? Is that almost psychic? Is that? Well, it's the same process. We go into trance and we access the subconscious and we ask the subconscious to move ahead in time. Um, I, I'll be quite honest, I don't, I'm not comfortable doing future life progression because for me, there's less, you, you can't really prove it either way. And um, so from that perspective, at least with past lives, you've got a chance in some way of verifying it if people yeah. want to verify it. If it's a future life progression, how do we know that it's real or imagined? We honestly don't. So I used to do quite a lot of, uh, I, I still do past life regression workshops with groups, but I also do a past life regression and a future life progression workshop. But I stopped doing them because um, I would take people, let's say, 500 years, 800 years into the future. And more often than not, most people were saying life on Earth is terrible. It's horrible. It's a horrible experience. There's been massive wars. There's hardly anybody alive. You know, there's no ozone layer. We can't go out in the sun. People living underground. And it, they were just reporting really horrible stories. And I got depressed. I thought, I, you know, I thought we we're in the age of Aquarius. I thought we we're coming through all this. Yeah. And these people were saying not. And so, but I spoke to colleagues who were also doing future life progression workshops and they were saying, no, all of our people are saying it's wonderful in 500 years time. (laughs) You know, it's marvelous. It's the age of Aquarius and everybody loves each other, et cetera. And I'm thinking, well, what's that about? Is that just that my clients were reflecting me who's a miserable old (laughs) so-and-so or something else? So, I wasn't satisfied with the, the with what was coming through, so I actually stopped doing them, and I very rarely do future life progression now. Okay, it seems like you were tapping into the COVID future, maybe. <laughs> yeah, um, possibly, I yeah. You know, can't go out where we're at now. Oh, um, yeah. So, but with with everyone that that's um, that, that that you talk to, are they always human? You know, has anyone ever been a dog or a lion? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Occasionally, okay. occasionally we get past lives as animals. Not very often. Um, so I had one person who was a, a rat. Uh, they got run over by a car. Uh, <laughs> wow. Reached past life. I had somebody who was a rabbit. Um, and that was a very boring experience because <laughs> it was nothing. I kept saying, what's happening now? She said, I'm just hopping around over here. Um, I had somebody who was a cat in a Greek temple looking for mice. 
And uh, so, yeah, it, it is possible to have past lives as animals. Um, going further than that, I had one gentleman who felt he was a rock in a previous lifetime. What? And so that was the most boring past life I've ever done. Because <laughs> I kept saying, so what's happening now? He said, well, nothing. I'm a rock. I'm just sitting here watching how, how the is, how, so, so how is that possible then? Because well, on the one hand, it may just have been, of course, imagination. However... There is this shamanic concept that everything has soul, everything has spirit. And if you think about, you know, I've done shamanic training and, and we were trained, you know, connect to trees, connect to rocks, etc., etc. Yeah. Tibetan Buddhism says that every blade of grass, every leaf has a Buddha in it. So it may be that that man's story wasn't quite so weird after all. There may have been a ring of truth in it in terms of, a higher sort of spiritual perspective. Oh, okay. So for me, I, I would describe that as um, every, everything that exists in this world is just atoms vibrating to a particular frequency, mm -hmm. and in order, and 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 that's all we are. And you can manipulate that those atoms and change the the, the vibrational frequency, and therefore you can change the form of the object, mm -hmm. and kind of like cymatics. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that that you know that the the, the the atoms or whatever that were making up that rock i don't know <laughs> were, yeah. were were alive were, were had, had a consciousness a consciousness of some sort that we don't understand yeah and i've certainly had clients who have been um uh, in different life forms on other planets and uh, ah, so that was my next question when, uh, yeah. have you ever um one of my favorite films is a film called fourth kind and yeah. that's about uh, it was supposed to be based on a true story but i think it was marketing Okay. Um, and it, it was about people being regressed and realizing that they've been abducted by aliens. Yes. Um, have you ever had that? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, wow. So there's two two things there. Um, first of all, yes, I've just cover the, the people who have been reborn on other planets as other yeah. life forms. They're, they're often, I've had people who like a different energy form, like a flame energy um, on, a, on a planet. Um, I've had people who have uh, actually, a, one gentleman who's a, uh, an extraterrestrial that crash landed on earth and he was the sole survivor and he spent a long time terrified on earth hiding away from earthlings because of the the level of violence down here and he, he said he kept saying what is wrong with them it doesn't have to be like this it doesn't Blimey. have to be like this what is wrong with them down here when was it, that? When do you know what time period that was? I have no idea. No, I was. Uh, this is about releasing trauma, so I don't go in for too much detail. Yeah, yeah. Um, but eventually, his people came and, and picked him back up and took him back up uh, to his own planet. But that was, you know, an eye opener in a way that it doesn't have to be like this. We do live in an asylum down here, and uh, you know, higher beings must must look at what goes on on Earth and think, what on Earth is wrong with? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've certainly done quite a lot of alien abduction regression. I was featured on a Sky TV program some years ago called The Real 4400. And in this, I was asked to regress um, what well, it was a, a mother and her two sons and her mother who had had missing time experience. And uh, they were up in North Yorkshire. They went for lunch one day to a little chef, which no longer exists, of course. And um, as they were driving home, all of a sudden, a spacecraft came right down alongside of the car and was shining lights in the car. And they got this incredible feeling of euphoria before all of a sudden the spacecraft just shot off at the speed of light and disappeared. And they were obviously shocked, but they were saddened when the spaceship shot off because they'd had this amazing feeling of love and, and, and euphoric feelings. So they were talking about this all the way home, as you would do, they arrived home to find that a journey which should have taken 20 minutes had taken an hour and 20 minutes. They knew they'd lost an hour of their lives and they all felt something else had happened. Uh, the boys started to get nightmares and struggle with this and they were all not in a good state. So the producer of the documentary asked me if I'd regress uh, the lady, the mom of the two boys who was what, probably late 30s at uh, that stage, early 40s. Um, and she went into, took her into trance, and I asked her to go back to what had happened. What happened is the whole car was taken up onto the spacecraft. They were then taken out of the car, and they were investigated by lights or orbs which were shining down around them. 
They couldn't see the beings in the spacecraft. They were sort of shielded from that. They knew, and, but they were being to- spoken to telepathically. And uh, the, the lady in the tra- when she was in trance, she was so happy. It was such a beautiful experience. And then suddenly she started to get very agitated and to cry. And she said, no, no, not the boys, not the boys. And, and it was the, the, the lights were going near the boys. And then she softened again and calmed down and smiled. She said, no, they're, they're telling me they're not going to hurt us. They're not going to hurt the boys. They're just checking things out. And so this went on for a little while. They were then put back in the car. The car was lowered from the spacecraft back onto the road. And then they were back into consciousness. She was driving along the road and the spacecraft shot off again. So... Um, I firmly believe, I'm a 100% believer in what happened to that family because there is no benefit to them to come off with this story at all. And uh, a lot of people say all oh, these people are publicity seekers who or the weirdos who, who want to believe they've been abducted or had uh, extraterrestrial experiences. In my experience, I have quite a bit of experience with this, The people who have had these experiences are normal, functioning human beings who are living good lives, holding a job down with a family, but something extraordinary has happened to them. They are not weirdos at all, or or there's nothing wrong with them. So um, I am 100% adamant that that family had that um, extraterrestrial connection experience. So when you hear this kind of thing, and you hear about alien abduction, and you hear about, um, you know, uh, souls living multiple lives mm. when you when you before you went into regression and, and you know back when you were, i don't know a teenager shall we say mm. did, did did you ever believe in this kind of thing or has this cemented your beliefs has it altered your beliefs i suppose it cemented it i've always had a sort of a, a spiritual perspective to me um when i was 14 i found out about reincarnation and suddenly life made sense for the first time life made sense because reincarnation makes sense of life all the traditional christian stuff uh, just doesn't make sense at all to me the uh, the judeo christian um, religions yeah but reincarnation suddenly made sense so then i started to read up about buddhism and i got interested in buddhism i was a practicing buddhist for a number of years uh, before i moved into shamanism for a few years and so i've always had a sort of a an, an open ear for this but i'm also very skeptical and uh you know, I'm not somebody who just looks at something and believes it for the sake of it. That, that really annoys me. I think we should discriminate and make our own minds up through uh, through reading, through research, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that happens a lot in the in the paranormal world. You know, we have people that come on investigations. That every noise is a ghost. Every oh. shadow is a ghost. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I often, you know, I often say that you, you, I go to every investigation to disprove Good point. Yeah. Paranormal activity, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's up to the activity to change my mind. To change it. And when I'm doing regressions, I mean, I've done thousands and thousands and thousands of regressions now, uh, and so many of those have been past life regressions. And there are there are things that I look for in a regression, and I can spot a fantasy regression a hundred yards away, a hundred meters away. If somebody is fantasizing and making it up the regression has a different quality to a real regression. So people often say, well, how can you tell? I've just done it so many times. I just know now. Uh, And that isn't me being silly or woolly-minded. It's just me looking for the the regression experience and the signs that I look for. Um, And people who have these fantasies, they're just, they're so obviously not real. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start winding it down now. So wh- where, where do you, wh- where do you I've, see I've you? only just got started. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to point out that I will 100% have you back on for a part two because oh, great, I, I'd, I'd love some more, um, particularly more of the stories. Yeah, um, I've got so the, many past life stories. 15,000. <laughs> yeah, <about. laughs> um, so uh, where, 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 what, what lies ahead for you now? You could, where where are, you, are, you, are you kind of, you're writing more books? Are yeah. you developing your, your, your field? Are you trying to take it new places? Yeah, it's, it's been a, quite an explosion this year for me, to be honest. I mean, um, my new book, The Power of Past Life Regression, came out at the end of March. Um, and that is about the therapeutic aspects of past life regression and many, many client stories there about how it healed them from so many different issues. 
so that's uh, one aspect of things. I'm getting a lot of exposure around the world with the book now. Um, I'm enjoying enormously working online. Uh, doing regression sessions and doing therapy sessions online. I'd always resisted that for, for many years, but in the last few months, um, I've got into it in such a way. I now have clients all around the world. It's just amazing to work online with people. I love it. That's uh, another aspect. I've got a new book which I've just written called The Adventures of a Hypnotherapist, and um, I'm hoping to get that published at some point. I've been asked to write a book about hypnotherapy for a big spiritual bookseller and book publisher in the States. Uh, and I've got my own training organization, so I run training courses, of course, as well. That's Lionheart Training. So I've got a lot of plate spinning. Um, I'm doing podcasts. I've got my um, um, podcast I'm doing on, on my podcasting site. And um, we've just two days – yesterday, we have just uh, published – the power of past life regression as an audio book. And nice. um, I'm so pleased because my son, Rob, who's who produced it and edited it and mixed and mastered it and worked so hard at it. We've taken months to actually record it. And it's now available on, uh, on audible on Amazon uh, as from yesterday. So uh, my, my son is, uh, is a genius when it comes to these things. It's such a high quality uh, production. And uh, and I've loved narrating it as well. I, I've narrated the story. I've narrated the book. We, I wanted to get Stephen Fry in, but uh, he wasn't interested. <laughs> 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 so there's, there's all sorts happening. And, 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 you know, my career, I've got a lot of contacts now in America, I've been asked to go to America to do various things. So uh, I'm just so passionate, Kieran, about the importance of past life regression as a therapeutic process. I really am because I know it's effective and I, I just get so cheesed off when people just sort of rubbish it. Because, oh, it's all imagination. It isn't all imagination. And um, it is, for me, the most powerful therapy process that I know well, I mean, I, I must say that the, the passion certainly comes across in the way you um, describe the job and and, and how you. you treat your clients. Yeah. So uh, that, that that's that's very um, noticeable. Um, Thank you. It's a noticeable asset of yourself. Um, okay, so we know about the uh, the books you've mentioned. You've got your YouTube channel, Hypno for All. I'll put yeah. all the links to this um, underneath. You. But how how can listeners contact you? So should anybody maybe want to contact you for a regression um what's the yeah. best form of contact okay um either go through my website which is lionheart-training.com lionheart-training.com um or go via my wordpress site which is no blog pod dot wordpress dot com hypno h-y-p-n-o blog pod b-l-o-g-p-o-d hypno blog pod dot wordpress dot com people can contact me there and um or um i don't know messenger pigeon is also good as well i live up in the north at the moment so, you know, so we all have we all have pigeons flying around up here don't we, we all there. Uh, yeah. we have we have horse and cart around here oh absolutely yes. <laughs> um in fact just slightly off topic i remember taking my driving le lesson in a place called gornal which is in the heart of dudley okay. and the, i don't know why they do it there because the roads are so small and when i asked why it's because they were for horse and carts and they'd never <laughs> they never redeveloped them for cars oh, gosh. Um, yeah so <laughs> the insurance tradition. Insurance costs around there must be through the roof. Oh, can you imagine? Um, okay, so we've got lionheart-training.com or hypnoblogpod.wordpress.com. So yeah. for the listeners out there, should you wish to uh, to contact Mr. Burgess for a regression, and I most certainly will be, by the way, yeah. um, then uh, you can do so through those, and I'll make sure to put all the links beneath the uh, beneath this upload. Um, so is there anything you'd like to, to say before we uh, before we say our farewells? Um, I just one thing I often say is how effect how, how important it is to have therapy um, because therapy sets you free. You know, we all have emotional baggage. We all have stuff that holds us back from being free and living our lives joyfully. So, you know, therapy isn't some sort of American thing where everybody sits down with their analyst for years. Um, therapy is about changing what's going on inside you in order to heal and. When every person who has therapy becomes more balanced, the world becomes more balanced. And so, therefore, for me, 
having therapy is an important part of the process of healing the world. Well, that's a, a perfect way to end it. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks, Steve. Thanks for coming on. Um, as I say, we'll 100% have you back on for a part two. Fantastic. Uh, Thank part you. three, part four, part five. Just enough episodes <laughs> to get 15,000 stories in. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, take care. And it's safe for me. Thank you, Kieran. Thank you Speak so much for having me on. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So that was the interview there with Steve Burgess and an absolutely fascinating one, if I, if I do say so myself. Um, never in a million years would I have thought Steve would have taken me down the road of a David Icke-esque possible theory as far as regression and reincarnation is concerned. But it certainly made me think and uh, I've made a few notes and I'll be going away and, and pondering that and looking a little bit deeper into that because something he said rang true with me there about, you know, we're made to reincarnate in order to to further feed the, the negative energies that, that these things, these archons, if you, if you will, feed on. Um, and I know that's going quite deep and it is quite conspiratorial, but um, I, I didn't expect Steve to take me there and I was, I was fascinated that he did. Um, but also some of the stories about, um, you know, that the, the Queen Elizabeth I and Bloody Mary... And the chances of getting those two clients so close together um, and actually being able to get them together as well and, and their reaction was certainly interesting to, to hear. Um, and I will be purchasing uh, Steve's book um, because, as I've said, it, it's always been an interest of mine, this. And I did talk to Steve just after we came off the interview and I will be booking a regression session with him myself. So... Do listen out in a in a future episode because I'll, I'll be sure to feed back whatever happens during that session. Um, hopefully something does come of it, as I did mention in the interview. I've always been a little bit wary of um, going and seeing a hypnotherapist because I've always been worried that it wouldn't have an effect on me and I, I would fight it, I guess. The stubbornness in me would fight it and it would just be a waste of both of our time. But Steve seemed quite confident that he could get some kind of result from it. So I'm happy to go along with it. And as I say, I will give you any results from that and discuss with you guys how it went and um, any feedback that I've got from it. So hopefully you enjoyed that interview. And remember what I mentioned in the intro, that we do have this new venture, myself and James, the Paranoia uh, group. Uh, head over to Facebook for that. P-A-R-A-L-N-O-I-A. Head over there, join in the group, start sharing your experiences and let us know if you'd like us to come and investigate some of your experiences personally. We'd, we'd, we'd be uh, honoured to, to do so. Now, before I sign off, um, just before recording this episode, um, as you know, it's not live. So just before recording this episode, I did do my uh, first ever live show for the the Collective Conspiracy Show, which is available on Facebook. I've shared the links on our Facebook group and our Facebook page. You just need to, to go to the Keep On Chatting um, group and join in there and you'll see it. This show is going to be every other Monday, so it will run um, opposite Mondays to when this podcast is released. And it just allows me to to focus some energy and time on, on the other passion of mine, which is conspiracy theories. And the first show that's just been just being live, was with Mark Conlon, who came on to discuss 9-11, uh, particularly around the no-plane theory. And it's very interesting. You, can, you could tell that, you know, Mark, who's done seven years' research into this, and he's written uh, so many blog posts on it, and, and so much research has gone into it. And he, he tried his best to condense it into a, into a one-hour live show. And um, and he did. He did well. But we, we're going to get him back on for a second episode because... There's so much more to discuss uh, on that subject anyway. And he has agreed to come on. So so if you're into that kind of thing and, and, and you know, you're not just into the paranormal or if you're just into listening to something new, um, do head over there. Like I say, I do put the link up on the group, so just keep your eye out for it because I'll be sharing it again there. And uh, who knows what the next topic will be. I've got a couple of people I could be talking to. But, uh, yeah, I do want to do something maybe about the moon. That, that, that could be interesting. But back to the paranormal. Thank you for tuning in. As always, the uh, the listeners are growing worldwide in countries I would never have dreamed would be listening to this show. Uh, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for listening to it and for making me come back and do it 
uh, episode by episode. And as I've said before, it is you guys that I do this for. And I am glad that you're enjoying it and interacting now. We are getting more interactions, more people talking on the group, more people emailing me personally. Thank you again to Greg for sharing your stories there that I, I mentioned at the start. And uh, yeah, so on to the next episode. And until then, take care.